Hey, hey, hey. The objective for this video is type 1 and type 2 errors and power. So we're going to start off with some of the stuff that we've already talked about in um, the previous scenario. Okay, so, but first of all, I want to talk about what is a type 1 error. Now, we already know type 1 error is a false positive, but something new is that a type 1 error is our alpha level. So, like, if I give you a problem, and like we had a problem today in which our alpha was 0 0.05, that is also our type 1 error. Now, please remember, as we look at the idea of a type 2 error, the type 2 error is a... Um, false negative and the type 2 error, I've got some more Greek for you, is my beta. And then we're going to be actually looking at a power of a test. And what the power of a test is, it is the probability of detecting a type 2 error. So let's just fill in some of these notes. Okay, now a significant test of a type 2 error is when we're trying to see if we support it or fail to reject the HO, because isn't that what a type 2 error is? So a significant test makes a type 2 error, again, when we fail to reject it, but we should, we should have failed to reject it. So, so as I say that again, the type 1 is when we support or fail to reject the HO, when the reality is we should have failed to reject the HA. Now, there are many values that are going to, that can be represented in order for you to fail um, that are going to be an alternative to the null hypothesis. So it basically depends on whether it's going to be a less than or greater than or equal to. So that the probability of your type 2 can change because your type 2 error depends on an actual value. So in other words, if I'm talking to you about your HA and your P is going to be um, greater than 0.5 like we had in today's scenario, well, how many values can I find that are less than 0.5? Well, a lot. A substantial amount and once we have that type 2 once we have find that it's a type 2 error which means that we should have rejected the HO we should have rejected the HA I'm sorry um, in error we're trying to figure out based on that information Given the sample data, what specific alternative value could be used? So, a high probability of the type 2 error for a specific alternative um, is not sensitive enough to detect the alternative. So, and as we're talking about this, we need to understand the idea of the theoretical ideology. We're not going to have to do the math in STATS 1, because that's what we're in in STATS 1. It is common to report the probability that a significant test rejects the HO when the alternative is true. And this is referred to as the power of the test, the power against a specific alternative. And a power is determined by 1 minus the type 2. Power is 1 minus beta. Now, as I said at the very beginning, here the, the power is the probability of detecting a type 2 error the probability of detecting a false negative. So, with that being said, let's continue with our notes. You know what? Before we continue with our notes, let's just recap what I just said. Alpha is the probability of a type 1, which is the probability of rejecting the null hypothesis, given that the null hypothesis is really true. Beta, which is your Greek for B, Greek B right here, is the probability of a type 2 error, which is the probability of failing to reject the HO when the HO was really false. Now, when we look at the idea of the power of the test, a power is 1 minus beta. I mentioned that earlier. So that's the probability of rejecting the HO given that the HO is false. Power, again, 
I'm saying it in a different way, is 1 minus um, beta, which is the probability of rejecting the HO given that the, that the parameter equals some alternative value. And remember how I said some alternative value? That here, is it greater than 0.5? Um, and I, I think I may have said something in error earlier, but greater than 0.5, is it 0.6 or is it 0.7? We don't know, okay? We just said it could be some alternative value. So as I continue, power is the probability that we have convincing evidence against the alternative um, hypothesis, okay? And that situation is true, given that the alternative hypothesis is really true. And you might have to rewind that to listen to this again. Power is the probability of detecting a type 2 error. And that, to me, in the nutshell, that I've said to you several times is the bottom line. So let's jump to an, jump to an example. Okay, so now let's do problem number 54. But before we do 54, if you notice right here, it says we have to refer back to page um, 13, which is example number 40. So... Let's take a minute to go back and preview that. Okay, so this one's about the Alzheimer's patients. Okay, a drug manufacturer claims that um, less than 10% of the patients who take the new drug treatment for the Alzheimer's disease will experience nausea. Okay, so I need to look at our, what our HO and our HA is. Because remember, we're talking about the power of a test. So we need to figure out what our type 1 is. We need to have to figure out what our type 2 is. And... Then from there, we will be able to look at the idea of the power. So now let's go back to page where, wherever that problem number 54 was. Okay, so here, as we can see, I just took, wrote a couple of notes that the whole premise is that it's going to be equal, HO is equal to 10%. Um, the HA is that it's going to be less than 10%. So let's talk about our type 1 error. Our type 1 error is we're going to reject the null hypothesis, reject the HO, oops, reject it, but it's an error. So put it in context, reject the HO. We're going to reject that the P is going to be equal to 10, which is an error. At the same time, if we're going to reject the HO, we're going to support the HA, okay, um, that it is going to be less than the 10%, I need a decimal there, when the reality is, again, that's an error. Okay, so um, I just put that generically. So now let's refer to the book because I'm running out of time. So what we are doing here is finding convincing evidence that less than 10% will suffer when the reality is that's false that at least 10% would. So here, and I'm just like, again, a time issue for me, our consequences here is the new drug that we used um, is going to cause more nauseousness than they state. Okay, that's no bueno. So that's a consequence of our type um, 1 error. So now let's look at our type 2. So, let's look at the idea of the type 2. Here, remember the type 2 is that we support the HO. Oops, but it, we should not have supported it. We support the HO in context here, support the HO that it's going to be equal to 10%, that it's going to be what they say, which is 10%. Okay, and we're in error. We're going to reject the HA, and this part makes more sense. We're going to reject that it is going to be less than um, 10%. Again, that's an error. So now let's refer to our book and see our what they say from here. So our type 2 is that we're going to fail, is failing to, um, failing to have convincing evidence that it's less than 10% would suffer when the reality is that it is true that less than 10% would suffer. And our consequences here is that we'd have a new, a new drug that, ha um, that uses it, th a new drug that's going to cause um, fewer side effects, but it's going to be used by less patients. 
So the bottom line here is that the patients should be using this drug, but we've been told that they are, um, the side effects are, you know, they're going to have a lot of side effects, so they're choosing not to, which I wouldn't either if I were in that case. So that is the idea of the consequences for the type 2, which takes us to the next page. Let's explain. So part B, it says the power of the test is 54%. So the probability of detecting a type 2 error is 54%. And they found, um, the, so the power of I'm sorry, I need to say this again. The probability of detecting a type 2 error is 7%. The power here, which is our, our alternative hypothesis, would be 0.54. So let's just jump into this and then see what this is talking about in context. So it is saying if the true proportion of Alzheimer's patients that have nausea is really 7%, if that is the probability value, that there is a 54%, that is the power, 54% um, chance that the results provided for the evidence um, is going to be truly that 10%. It's going to be truly what they say, which is your um, a part of your um, hypothesis, a part of your null hypothesis. I'm sorry, wrong term, a part of your alternative hypothesis. So I kind of wasn't very smooth on that, but as we're looking at this right here, this is an AP question waiting to happen, that we have 54% chance of finding, of detecting a type 2 error. And remember, here is the idea of the type 2 error. Now, something I didn't give you in your notes, which I should have, okay, is indicate two ways of increasing the power, okay? So, because remember, we want to detect that there's an error. So, if we increase it, that means we increase our chances of finding that error. So, we increase our sample size. Well, isn't that the mantra for all statistics? And then we also increase our um, alpha level. And if you think about it, increasing our alpha level means that I want to come from it from a confidence interval point of view, increasing our alpha level, which means that we're going to decrease our confidence interval. So here, if this is your alpha, this is your alpha, we're going to be making a more narrow confidence interval because here is the idea of what your alpha is. Okay, but here, this is a multiple choice question waiting to happen too, and this is the two, and this can be free response. Increase your sample size, increase your significance um, level, that will increase the power. So, TTFN, ta-ta for now, I'm running late, peace out.